Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Green Rope webinar. My name is Alessandra Guyven. I'm the marketing manager here at Green Rope. Um, and if you don't, if you're not a Green Rope user, uh, Green Rope's a complete CRM and marketing automation platform. And of course, our uh, CEO is on with us today, so he'll be talking more about that. Uh, but if uh, we're really excited for today's presentation, uh, we're just going to give it about a minute here for some uh, last attendees to log in. Um, and then at about um, one minute after, we will get started with the presentation. All right, um, I believe now is as good a time as any. Um, again, welcome to a, another great Green Rope webinar. We've got an incredibly exciting presentation for you today. Uh, the topic is Creative That Works, Design and Copy Best Practices for Better Marketing. Again, my name is Alessandra Guyven. I'm the Marketing Manager here at Green Rope. And today uh, on our panel, we've got um, some incredibly intelligent gentlemen, and I'm really excited uh, to for this presentation, and I hope that everyone get, really gets a lot out of it. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to pass it on over to our panelists. Uh, they'll be giving a little description um, about who they are and uh, about their companies, and then we will go ahead with the presentation. We've got a lot to go to get through today. Um, so without, let's get started. Dennis, welcome. Thanks, Alessandra. This is Dennis Kelly. I'm the CEO of Postalytics. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Super excited to uh, present uh, Creative That Works. And uh, uh, I've done a, a great webinar with Lars in the past and, and have recently been working with Julian, uh, who's, a, who's a brilliant creative. And so we're, we're super excited to have everybody here today. Uh, Postalytics is a direct mail automation tool for those of you who don't know us, uh, we make the uh, production of direct mail fast and easy. Uh, we're able to synchronize direct mail with CRM systems like Green Rope and provide uh, analytics and tracking on every piece of mail that is sent. Uh, you can check us out on our website anytime. And uh, I'll next hand it off to Julian. Hello, and thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm Julian. I'm the Group Creative Director of the APS Group. APS Group is a full integrated marketing agency, and we specialize in everything from branding all the way through to direct mail and email. My major interest and specialism, as well as in kind of great ideas for, for advertising and marketing, is in behavioral science and the psychology of design, writing, and ideas to essentially uplift response, so to enhance your ROI. And essentially, I work with Dennis and Lars, and I advise them on a consultancy basis through the APS group to help improve the marketing materials of their companies and their clients. Lars, over to you. Yeah, it's great to have you both uh, here. And it's, it's truly an honor to be with people that have the experience and the knowledge um, like you guys have. Uh, we've been working with Postalytics for quite some time now and uh, really enjoy the integration. Our customers enjoy the integration. Um, when you're able to combine direct mail with the rest of the C CRM and marketing automation stack, you start to get some really powerful engagement tools. And I think you'll see from the presentation today that, uh, that you're in for a real, you really are in for a treat. Um, the information that uh, Julian's going to share is just, it's going to be so insightful and um, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm, I'm sure you will too. So without much further ado, um, take it away. Great. So um, uh, we're going to start today uh, with just a, a quick overview of uh, direct mail uh, and, and 
talk about why it works and some of the trust and science uh, behind direct mail. Uh, so uh, the uh, reality in the direct mail world that most people are aware of is that mail volumes have dropped dramatically, uh, particularly over the last 10 years. And, and you know, the, the question is, why have they dropped? And, and the answer is that we actually have much better technology to do things that mail used to do, uh, such as personal correspondence. Not many folks are writing letters to each other anymore. Uh, uh, expressing interest in things through online forms. You used to have to fill out a business reply card to express interest in something. And so there's all sorts of mail that went back and forth. Paying your bills. Bill pay has cut into mail volumes tremendously. And, and bill pay is just so much easier to do online. So, you know, mail isn't the best or only way to do these things anymore. Uh, and so as a result, the mailbox is a less crowded place. And what that means is that smart marketers see an opportunity. So the other big issue is that trust is plummeting in institutions around the world. Uh, there's a, a great research firm called Edelman that uh, does an annual survey in trust and uh, they declared in 2017 for the first time that trust is in crisis. Uh, meanwhile, uh, direct mail trust remains very high. 76% uh, of consumers, according to Marketing Sherpa, uh, believe uh, in ads that they receive in the mail when they're likely to make a purchase decision. Uh, well, as you can see, a lot of the digital media trust is very low. Uh, online pop-ups being by far the lowest. Uh, and, you know, when you think about it, after all the scams that have happened online, how many of you trust emails from your bank or credit card at this point? It's really hard to do. And so while trust is plummeting in just about everything, it remains really high in direct mail. So why should we trust direct mail? Why do people do it? Well, there's really some great scientific reasons. So first, uh, there's a growing body of evidence that suggests that consumers trust direct mail because of the unique way that paper-based advertising connects with different parts of the brain that control how we feel and remember things. And so brain imaging and eye tracking studies show that our brains actually process paper-based advertising differently than digital advertising. These studies show that paper-based advertising, such as direct mail, requires less effort to understand and seems more real and generates more emotion. And so a, a 2015 study from Canada Post shows that direct mail marketing requires 21% less cognitive effort to process and elicits a much higher brand recall than comparable to digital media. So you add that up, we've gotten rid of unnecessary clutter in the mailbox. Mail is highly trusted by recipients. Science is telling us that paper-based ads are super effective based on the latest brain studies. And, and what that means is that effectiveness of direct mail has exploded. So the DMA reports that since 2010, response rates for all direct mail, both uh, with cold leads as well as known leads are way up, about 50% each. And so there's been this combination of factors that have come together to make mail a, a great thing and, and a very effective channel uh, in today's market. Thanks, Dennis. <clears throat> so what I wanted to cover off now were a number of takeaway tips and techniques 
that you guys can uh, take away straight away and implement into your marketing and advertising creative, specifically across your direct marketing, um, to, to essentially improve your response and improve engagement and look at getting those all important sales. Um, so what we'll do is we'll cover um, various number of kind of techniques across ideas, across design, across writing, and I'll add some narrative to each of the techniques I'm going to share with you. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about are teased reveals. Now, teased reveals work in a, a simple uh, way that Christmas presents and movie trailers work and it's that, that innate curiosity that we have as human beings that we want to know more and essentially when we look at this mailing here for while you've been away we selected these exclusive savings for you simply the pull to reveal tab the use of the irregular shape there pointing at the the direction that you want to pull is just simply too much uh, to resist and this idea of of curiosity in outers is a really powerful tool and it can be used in some very very kind of simple ways take this example from the uk for example this double window mailing plays on the on the fact of loyalty loyalty is worth a lot but actually the the actual amount that you're going to receive is obscured intentionally so therefore it prompts you to want to open the mailing it's a beautifully simple technique that essentially plays on our innate desire to just want to know more it's the reason why clickbait works across a lot of um, copy based adverts etc that you want to know the, the reveal of a scenario gamification is a powerful tool as well ultimately we are all children inside we all like a little play and essentially what you can do <coughs> with gamification is just make your direct marketing more in interactive and the best way to do this is to simply go and steal an idea from a children's book take this mailing for bank of america the lift up tabs um, giving you an idea as to what you can do with a hundred thousand pound loan for example it's just a beautifully simple way that just makes the actual pack more engaging and more memorable and sometimes when we're thinking about direct mail unlike other forms of marketing communication direct mail lives around the home um, and it can often be left on coffee tables and sideboards, etc. as well. So actually these little kind of gimmicks such as gamification, even though they might just be left on a coffee table, will eventually get picked up and interacted with. And because they're interacted with, they create a smile in the mind and become more memorable. Take this example, just a simple scratch and reveal. It, it basically plays upon the fact that we're all a child inside. We just can't help but just want to, with our fingernail or with a quarter, we just want to scratch away and get the reveal and reveal the deal. And essentially, once we've begun to start interact with something, we're more likely to carry on reading. And sometimes that is all we need to do. This mailing for Lush Cosmetics, for example, gives the illusion that the clothes will be removed when you pull the tab. Again, just playing on a little bit of cheekiness, but just the innate curiosity of wanting to reveal. The rule of three is a very powerful technique, and a lot of people don't realize that um, out of all the numbers, uh, from one to, to ten, for example, three is the most memorable number that we recognize. So because the, what happens is that the human brain is naturally attracted to patterns and the pattern that we're most attracted to in any form, in any other number is number three. It's no reason why such statements as truth, justice in the American way, life, liberty and, ha and the pursuit of happiness, a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play, are so memorable. And it's simply because of that rule of three. Three is simply the most memorable number that we can, we can have. So using three elements of three across your mailings will actually make them become more readable and more attractive to the eye. Here's a list of examples. Look at how many times on these mailings there's a rule of three used, whether it be a graphic on the left-hand side, whether it be the call to action up in the top middle of call, click, come in, whether it just be the number of cards displayed 
on a Maybank, three cars. Why not two? Why not four? It's because three attracts us. We are naturally attracted to this pattern. So using the rule of three across bullet points, across design points, is certainly something that you will find as a powerful persuasion tool. Understanding at a glance is a very, very important tool to, to look at. Now, there's a reason why the mailing on the left is, is going to work more powerfully than the mailing on the right. And it's simply because it uses more understand at a glance techniques. Now, what do I mean by understand at a glance techniques? Well, let's have a look at the mailer on the left a little bit closer. See how the valid until and invitation code, the loan amount box, the headline of fast response and fixed rates, the subheads throughout the letter, you deserve a better rate, the PS, the actual invitation code repeated down at the bottom, the apply online and the call to action on the right, Essentially, what you can do with this letter is understand the key messages in around about three to five seconds. Now, this is massively important because as people, we're all incredibly busy. So opening this letter and understanding the key sales messages in under five seconds will basically make a subliminal decision to come back and spend more time with that mailing later. And you'll be surprised at how many marketeers forget this rule. That simply helping somebody understand the piece of communication in under five seconds can uplift response massively. Here's a, an example from the UK that, that I've produced recently of two letters that are both communicate, communicating exactly the same information. But the letter on the left, you'll notice, uses better understand at a glance techniques. Look at the way the call to action of six great reasons works, the one, two, three, the simple use of orange there. Look at how the call to action at the bottom of the page is stacked rather than on, in a kind of linear way, rather than piled on top of each other. Look at the different ways that we're using headers across and the different use of colors instead of purple text across the body text, we're using black text with purple headers. Now, interestingly, when we eye track this, look at the effect that it has. You can see on the left that the eye in under five seconds is hitting more key sales messages than any of the, of the other messages on the right hand side. It's a simple, beautiful rule that will have a massive impact on your marketing. The check mailing. Now, Certainly in financial services, the use of the check is, is almost a given. You have to use it, but you'd be surprised at how many marketeers across other sectors don't think about how to use the check because the check can be used as a voucher or any other kind of way. But the power of the check and the actual look of it actually plays upon the subliminal mind. Essentially, when people are holding a check or holding a discount voucher in any way that looks like a discount voucher, they're already imagining how they might spend it or the saving that they might make. So their mind is already further down the sales funnel than it would be than if it didn't have a check mail. So if you're not testing any kind of check or discount kind of uh, voucher kind of effects on your mailing, I would certainly suggest that you do so because you'll be, you'll be surprised how, how the effect it can have on your marketing. Typeface and font size. Now, if you're like me uh, and you're in your mid 40s, you'll be uh, wearing glasses. And the, the thing is with that, as people get older, over half of adults wear glasses or have contact lenses or you know or are struggling to read so what a lot of people don't understand is that actually increasing the point size slightly from 11 point which is what traditional direct marketing pieces are usually setting to around about 14 point can just increase the readability and understandability of a direct marketing piece but it's not just the point size that we need to consider as well. What you'll find on a lot of marketing messages, especially because of the advent of the internet, is that they don't use serif fonts anymore. By serif fonts, I mean little curvatures at the bottom of, of the font. You'll notice the font on this mailing is a sans serif. There are no curvatures. But let's have a look at other kind of fonts. This handwritten font, for example, feels more personal, and it actually comes from an online brand. And it's actually digitally printed is this, but it gives the feeling of a one-to-one -one communication, which is actually what 
direct mail used to be between people when it was first invented. It was actually written from one person to another person. It's the reason why virtually all direct marketing pieces have a signature on them. But have a look at this. Considering a serif font can actually have a massive impact on all your marketing materials. Fonts like Courier or Times, etc. What happens is, is they become more highly readable. Essentially, they create a baseline across the bottom of the page, which makes it easier for the eye to follow. So when you're looking at the, the body copy of your mailing pieces, maybe it's time to consider a serif font. What it also does as well, it harks back to an earlier, less sophisticated age when people would write letters to each other. It naturally feels more personal. It feels more genuine and feels more human. And in this age of mass communications and digital communications, harking back to a golden age can have a huge impact for you. I want to just focus a little bit on the power of the written word since we've, we've come to the points of fault. And I want to just talk to you about <clears throat> a little bit about psychology and behavioral science. The thing is with human beings, our natural order is, is that even when we're faced with insurmountable facts and reasons to perform an action, we sometimes won't always perform the right action. Let me take a frivolous things such as a, a, a pair of red shoes, for example, that a lady might want. Now, she might have all the reasons such as she can't afford them, etc., and all the reasons, not, rational reasons not to buy the shoes, but the emotion will always override the fact that she wants them and that they will make her happy. And so she will set aside other rational decisions and maybe go without lunch on a couple of days in order to enable to afford things like that. So even when you have a huge list of facts and features, you will always need some form of psychology and behavioral science. And the less facts and features that you have, you need even more psychology and behavioral science. Now, what do I mean by that kind of psychology and behavioral science? Well, let me give you a few little tips and techniques that you can use word-wise as well. Because the written word is a very, very powerful force and can really play upon people's minds. Take this headline, for example, from De Beers. Two months' salary showed the future, and Mrs. Smith, what the future will be like. The actual persuasion and response and the beautiful kind of nuances of, the, of this headline, I'm going to show you how it is so powerful. Similar with this letter from the Wall Street Journal from the 1970s, which has been responsible for over $1 billion of subscriptions. It uses what might be considered a cliched storytelling technique of two college friends who meet again 20, on their 25th reunion, and one has been more successful than the other. The difference being one of them has read the Wall Street Journal and the other one hasn't. Now, the, you might think that that is quite a cliched um, story, but actually it plays upon innate human fears of somebody being more successful than us. So storytelling, how can we bring storytelling into our marketing pieces? Well, you know, rather than listing benefits, stories show consumers how you can change their lives through concrete examples, putting them in a picture and getting them to imagine themselves using your products or service. And once they've put themselves in the picture, they'll want it more. But a lot of people get scared away from the stories because they actually think, well, is it going to increase the length of my copy? But you can actually do it in a very, very cute and simple way. So here's a four stage approach. You have a protagonist who you want the reader to identify with, a problem that your brand can make go away, a narrative of what happened and a resolution to the end of the story. And it's a simple four act story. So Lucy has an important job into the only horizon, but with payday so far away, she's glad that she can rely on her Capital One card to help her look her best on the big day. So there we have a simple story, a protagonist, a problem, and a resolution to the end of the story, all captured in one simple paragraph. The usage of the word you is interesting within marketing materials. The word you keeps you focused on essentially what you can do for the recipient uh, and what your product can offer them rather than you just distilling your, your features and benefits and, and bigging up yourself. 
when we first started out in writing for, for DM, I was taught the lesson that the more times that I would use the word you, the more successful my, write, my DM letters would be. And that's simply because it just keeps you focused on what you can do for people. Because people are inherently selfish. And when they receive your marketing materials, the first question they are asking themselves is, what's in it for me? We are all inherently selfish. So the word you helps you tackle that question head on. Take a look at how many times the word you is used within this letter. It's incredibly clever. And when we send you the deck, have a read at it and see how it stays focused on the actual recipient, but still cleverly gets across the actual benefits of the credit card offer. Double meaning is a great, I mean, the English language is a wonderful thing. And there are so many double meanings that we can play upon that can really leverage people with our marketing materials. Here's another example from my team. There's a totally unbeatable car insurance quote for you in this envelope with such a message and such a promise, who would not want to open the outer? But what have we got on the inside? No, it's not an actual price quote. It's a range of quotes taken from the internet as to why you should buy insurance from this company. It's a simple smile in the mind moment that is not a lie, it's just an extension. It's just playing with words and being a little bit playful and it still fulfills a promise. Repetition is a, is a wonderful kind of technique and a very, very simple technique that is often overlooked. See, repetition within the, the written word has the ability to make messages stick within people's minds. It's essentially, it's the word equivalent to a sonic, a memorable tune. Because once we create a natural rhythm with words, such as the meter technique, it, it is basically easier to recall. It's the reason why ask not what you, your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. It's so memorable. So for example, you know, let's have a look at how we can create some natural rhythms. Looking for an easy way to save, a way to save that fits your budget perfectly, a way to save that will help you get the car you've always wanted. Calling all loyalty card customers. We think loyalty should be rewarded. So we're offering you this exclusive deal to thank you for your loyalty. The repetition and the rhythm of these words across save and loyalty and how you focus on key messages like that will massively enhance the response of your marketing and the memorability of your marketing. Here's a great example from Chase that they use the word year across multiple places that they just want to get really stick this idea of the year within people's minds. It's a year rich in rewards, a year of seeing things for yourself, a year of authentic flavors. Meg, you've had a rewarding year. This repetition really, really kind of sticks in the mind and will actually be memorable in the person's mind up to three to four hours after they have actually read this mailing, it will just prompt a recall. And the use of the word year in language, later on in Meg's day, after she's read this mailing, mailing will actually prompt a recall of this mailing. So it actually, it really kind of creates that little bit of memorability, memorability in her head. Sometimes when we're thinking about um, direct marketing pieces and any kind of marketing pieces, we want to think about what emotion do we want to create in the reader. And this harks back to the De Beers advert that I mentioned. <clears throat> because to aid in persuasion, sometimes it's best to think about what emotion you would like to trigger in the reader in order to get them to act. So, for example, pride, because mums know best. We're not offering everybody this. We'd love to get your opinion. Take a look at this city mailing and how the special card member opportunity simply plays upon this sense of pride. It makes you feel exclusive. It's a tried and tested technique that works over and over again. Surprise. You don't need to spend thousands to refresh your home. Here's how to save for a home from as little as $1 a day. Discover high quality products at a price you wouldn't expect. Our lowest intro rate, no annual fee, no kidding. The sense of surprise created by the no kidding element creates a positive emotion and a des desire to discover if the offer is really true. 10 things you never knew about the ocean that will amaze you. Number three will take your breath away. This uh, element of surprise in this 
copy structure again is a is a technique used often in clickbait promises so sometimes people don't buy because of what you provide they buy things because of what you promise they you promise to get them a better job you promise to make them more wealthy if your copy is average people have to dig around for the promise so the trick is to make the promise clear and enticing to the consumer we promise you will want someone to be proud of when you retire we promise that you'll find a way to save that suits your financial demands we promise that there's always something new to discover take a look at how this url and the and the uh, the actual construction of it marries the promise together with a closing message Applying now, uh, American Express, save now with the high yield savings account. So it's just using some simple, clever techniques. This one, goodbye to spending more to get rewards. Hello to rewards for responsible payment habits. So the promise of rewards for good behavior is, is becoming very enticing here. Secrets is another technique that you can use. You can write secrets for any products or service, but sometimes it's best to kind of save it for when you've got a definite advantage over the competition. So want to know the secret to saving for a home. Top savers swear by this technique. Isn't it time you tried it too? The secret to achieving that killer look is all in the little details. Revealed the simple tricks every saver should know about. And I promise you, you can write secrets for anything. And as long as you've got some good insights and some good understanding of your audiences and their hopes and fears. Time, you'd be surprised how many people don't focus on time because as human beings, if we're not, um, we're not kind, of, kind of manipulated a little bit on time, we will take ages and ages to make a decision. And the use of social media has really kind of breathed a new life into the uh, idea of time. So for example, only one day left to save 50% on selected products. Respond before X and we'll include a free sample of X. Hurry, this offer must end at midnight tonight. Don't miss out on an extra 10% of all sale items today only. See, when you use these kind of techniques, what you're doing is you're increasing the heart rate of the recipient. And once they, the heart rate is increased, they're more likely to perform an action. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance is a really cute little way from Gecko that they've used time in a kind of different way. The promise of 15 minutes saving you so much. What else could you do in 15 minutes that could save you that amount? This idea from Omaha State, for example, with dated tickets open now really kind of plays upon that innate desire of missing out and no, nobody likes to miss out. So these are just a kind of few tips of the iceberg really on our persuasion and response workshops, which I've run uh, recently in Boston in the US and Geneva for Duracell. And I've run them all over the world. If you'd like to find out more about the persuasion and response workshops, um, they're free of charge. And essentially they cover techniques in writing and idea generation. Uh, they can help you enhance your ROI. And as I mentioned, they're free of charge. Feel free to get in touch with Dennis or Alessandra or Lars about them, and they will, con they will contact me, or you can contact me directly through LinkedIn or Twitter. So Dennis, should we talk about the postalytics mailings? Sure, that sounds great, Julian. Uh, thanks, that was really uh, tremendous. Uh, I'm furiously scr uh, scribbling down notes as uh, uh, I see all sorts of ways that I can incorporate some of these uh, options into our copy, our direct mail, and uh, you know we're we, we're looking for ways to make our clients' direct mail that much more effective. So, uh, what we're going to do next is uh, talk about some of our clients' actual direct mail that uh, our clients were kind enough to offer up for this exercise, and uh, Julian has taken the time to. Uh, do a creative review of them, and he will be uh, showing us some uh, before and after uh, creative that he's uh, mocked up uh, on behalf of uh, uh, these clients to show uh, some techniques uh, that Julian discussed today and, and how they can be deployed uh, using uh, uh, mail that is generated through Postalytics. 
So uh, our, our first uh, uh, client is a company called MYND, and uh, this company is a firm that is a B2B software company that sells uh, software to uh, apartment building owners. And uh, this letter uh, that uh, MYND has uh, been using is a prospecting letter to property owners. And so um, uh, Julian has lots of thoughts on it. Uh, so Julian, why don't you take it away? Yeah, thank you, Dennis. <clears throat> so, I mean, let me first of all say there are some really good things happening within this letter, but there are also just some small improvements that I feel could make to just work it a little bit hard. And, you know, what I've done is I've added some notes around this, this, this letter, so such as the opening headline could work a little bit better by utilising some of the benefits that are actually delivered in the main body text. There's some real key important sales messages in that body text, which could just work a little bit harder. The call to action and use of language could just be a little bit stronger. The design construction, as uh, I mentioned earlier, could benefit from a little bit more understanding at a glance. I think that the, the picture um, of, of the gentleman there in the bottom right hand corner is a little bit big. It's taking up too much valuable selling space. And I think the sometimes what a lot of people do is just dump up social icons down at the bottom of um, marketing pieces and i think sometimes it's it's you know we've got to give people reasons to follow us on social what benefits will they get what's in it for them what is what is that innate human desire what are they going to get i think the logo area in the top right could be used for better things so let me just kind of show you the actual um, redesign of this and, and just explain some of the things that i've got going on here so there was a fantastic quote on the mynd uh, website uh, which you can see there now in the bottom right hand corner. So you can see that immediately when you open the, the, this letter, the ident, the logo is at the top left. So there's immediate recognition of who this is. If you go, the eye will then track over to the uh, headline on the right, let our unique knowledge of the San Diego property market generate you the highest possible return. So clearly answering straight away the what's in it for me. The bullets on the right hand side achieve our understanding at a glance. So there's a clear reason as to why you should connect with MYND. 1,500 units managed with the help of a handy app, 20% reduction in your repair and maintenance costs, seven day average time to lease, 0% delinquency, and then a fantastic quote which was on their website. And then the actual letter construction, what we've done is we've, we've moved the gentleman to, to the actual signatory. They're kind of akin to what you kind of see on LinkedIn. And then the actual copy then, um, focuses on specialising in helping property owners uh, like the recipient get the actual highest possible returns. You know, a little bit of understanding then about having long-term tenancy and reduced overheads being the actual key to maximising your investment across property and then focusing on the San Diego knowledge and then closing. So many people forget the art of closing within a letter. So I'd very much love to hear about your challenges, you are facing or simply discuss how I feel I could help benefit you. So again, there's, if you have a look through there, there's your, you. We've got lots of uses of the word you in there as well. And then down at the very bottom, let's give them a reason to follow us on social media. So for the latest views and news on property in San Diego, please follow. So therefore there's a reason to, to come up. So what we've got there is just a simple little design, construction techniques, a little bit more understand at a glance techniques to just create a simpler, more powerful and easily understood mainly. Boy, that uh, uh, redesign, uh, Julian, really uh, draws my eye. Um, you know, I, I, I think the other one uh, was an effective letter, but this really, uh, sort of informs me so quickly uh, what the real benefits of MYND are. Uh, and, you know, the other thing, I, I think you actually have more copy and more benefits here, and, and, but it, it feels like it has more white space. So it, it feels like the, they can breathe a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, I think you're right, Dennis. I don't think that in the original there's any mention of the 
uh, the Handy app, which is a real kind of key selling uh, tool for MYND. And, and you're right, there's a number, the 17 day and the 0% delinquency. We, we have actually managed to squeeze in more key sales messages that actually make it feel just a little bit easily digestible. You know, one of the things that, that we see quite a bit of is uh, marketers really want to uh, say a lot. And, and it, it often feels like the pieces uh, that are generated are um, uh, really overwhelmed with copy. And, uh, you know, this sort of design construction that you've put together, I think, uh, allows that to the, the, the marketer to really tell the story and, and describe the benefits, but not overwhelm the eye. So um, the next uh, client uh, that offered up their uh, uh, creative is a company called Toast. And Toast is a Boston-based uh, restaurant point of sale software company uh, that is uh, absolutely exploding. Uh, there are uh, growing incredibly rapidly all around the country. Uh, and uh, their promise is to simplify operations by combining point of system, front of house, back of house, and guest facing technology on a single platform. And so their goal was to reawaken uh, some cold leads that were uh, in their HubSpot uh, database, and they wanted to uh, uh, capture uh, and, and, and get them to respond. They'd gone quiet on email. And so um, uh, Toast sent out a six by 11 postcard uh, through Postalytics uh, that looked like this. Yeah, so on, on this one, I mean, there were actually some really good things happening in, in here as well. I just felt that it just needed a little bit more nuances kind of putting in. I think the, the front of the mailing was lacking a little bit of structure uh, in its design. I felt, you know, the fact that Toast didn't have a URL on the, on the actual front of the mailing was a little bit of a, of a missed opportunity. I think the use of the testimonial on the back uh, was good, but it just felt a little bit lost. The position of the call to action again felt like it wasn't in the right position. I think the introduction header felt like it could be more enticing and, and the use of the subheads was, was good, but I think the actual kind of structure of the sales copy could just benefit from being a little bit more benefit led. Uh, it, it just felt like it was very much just talking about the features of Toast rather than actually relating it back to what actually it could do for, for people as well. So I think if we go into the redesign, so what I've done is uh, brought through the uh, a more powerful header onto the front, increase your revenue and delight your guests to increase repeat visits with Toast. So a real benefit led um, message there. And then did you know loyal repeat customers generate 10 times more revenue than new customers? That was a fact that, that Toast uh, really kind of champion and I thought was really good. I think the URL now appearing under the uh, logo on the on the front cover works works better. Although I, I couldn't find the actual um, image on the uh, on the actual original, but I do think that image is really good um, anyway. And then what I've done on the on the actual reverse was just structure the. Um, the, the copy a little bit uh, sweeter. So discover the easy to use technology that's revolutioning restaurants like yours and delighting customers like yours. So really kind of using that you, you and yours there. And, and actually then let's position Toast as a real passionate believer in, in making restaurants succeed. So that introductory copy there, it talks about Toast's passion. So at Toast, we're passionate about great restaurants and helping restaurants like yours be the first pick when it comes to diners choosing where to eat. That's why we've developed an easy to use technology to aid establishments like yours run smoothly and main customer, maintain customer satisfaction through easy to use Android software, inbuilt loyalty program, Toast guest feedback, monitoring your restaurants from anywhere, and build your building a guest database to essentially encourage and, and capture those most important loyal customers and get them coming back. And then that leads us all the way down to a call to action, which we've we kind of used a little bit of language there to kind of just tease that. This is just the the there's so much more that Toast can do for you and giving people a reason to uh, utilize that QR code. And then the actual 
um, toast uh, kind of uh, quote that we found on the website there. We've, uh, we've just tweaked something. We found a, a more powerful quote there with toast. Go, we found that our turn times dropped away from 30 to 45 minutes per table. We're running an additional 500,000 in sales. Really kind of powerful tool. Um, uh, quote that, that I just felt just needed just to be brought up bigger. That's great. Um, you know, one, one of the things that uh, automation uh, of direct mail is enabling is the use of direct mail for um, uh, campaigns that are designed to work a little bit further down in the funnel than pure lead gen acquisition and prospecting uh, that has been traditionally the role of direct mail. And so, you know, we often see uh, uh, mail is like this going out to um, uh, folks that have been in email marketing campaigns and, and have gone quiet as this one was designed for. Um, and, you know, you can see that some of these techniques that you're talking about here uh, could be also deployed in emails and in landing pages. Uh, this particular uh, uh, mailer is in your redesign is really kind of pushing people to go to that uh, landing page. And um, maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the techniques that you can expand upon uh, while you're online or, or in other media uh, that can leverage something like this in a direct mail campaign. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> one of the things that I'm always a big advocate of is, is ultimately any, any marketing material that we, that we do are ultimately judged on response. So, you know, we should always kind of make it easier for recipients to, to respond in any way. So QR codes, I'm, I'm, I'm a big advocate of, you know, personalized URLs. But equally as well, I'm also a believer in the more ways that we can give people to respond, the better. So, you know, not just URLs, let's give them phone numbers, let's give them, you know, short codes for, um, for texting, etc. as well. So, you know, looking at how we can uh, add more and more call to action elements and giving people more options of how to respond, I always feel is a massive benefit. Great. So um, our next uh, set of creative, is from a customer called Board Vitals. And uh, what Board Vitals does is they uh, uh, provide examination preparation materials for medical professionals. And so um, they help uh, people that are preparing for licensing and certification exams uh, get ready for those very difficult and challenging tests. Uh, they cover more than 50 specialty areas and exams. And the piece that we're going to take a look at is uh, uh, prospecting uh, uh, for new graduates with a six by nine postcard. And uh, so uh, here it is. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I actually, um, you know, this was a, a, a piece that. Uh, we uh, we we enjoyed looking at because I think there's so there's so many good things going on in this piece, but actually it's just moving the boxes around to a certain degree on on these. I thought the headline was strong, uh, but I think it could it just needed probably a stronger testimonial to really kind of add weight to that one. Um, I think the overall design of the mailing could just do with some work, and I felt the shot on the on the left actually could benefit from a, a technique that I haven't spoken about yet, but I'll, I'll cover off now, is something called direct gaze. And that's the idea that ultimately as human beings, we're attracted to other human beings' faces. So I'll, I'll show you shortly how, how that affects. But I think the call to action area there could just use some strengthening. I think the, um, the you know, again, we're looking at that, why should we follow them on, on Twitter uh, and, and, and LinkedIn, etc. as well. And I think, you know, the copy in the reverse really does a good job of, of uh, showcasing what uh, board vitals do. But I actually felt that the actual copy should probably be a bit longer because usually what we're dealing with with people uh, of, of things, target audience of board vitals, is more educated, more 
um, you know, higher intelligent people who are used to reading and want to know more information. So I felt that we could just give them a little bit more information, which if we switch to the redesign, you can see here that how I've used direct gaze here to really draw somebody in. So pass your ABFM family medicine board exam guaranteed, bringing that right underneath with the actual offer, with the offer code, but see how then I bring through the rule of three onto the actual trusted and developed and proven results with ticks across them to kind of, you know, really kind of affirm them. I've just strengthened the little call to action and just brought the logo into a clear area and a website on then. And then on the actual reverse, I really ramped up this, this message of join 100,000 plus practitioners that use board vitals to prepare for the most important exams of their career. So let's use a little bit of crowd psychology. You know, people are more likely to perform an action if they know that lots of other people have gone before them. And then what I've done within the copy, I've just lengthened it slightly, but pulled out some real key sales points. So trusted by over 100,000 practitioners, 500 top class institutions, expert content online, 24 seven, three, six, five. And then to find out how board vitals can help you pass your board exams guaranteed, visit boardvitals.com or call this number. And then on the right hand side there, the actual quotation, most comprehensive online board review resource, numerous special I have seen, excellent quality and quantity of questions available. Wish I had this sooner. And actually, let's put somebody's name underneath there, Dr. Gary Choi there from, from the radiology. So just using some, some a little bit more words on there, but some clearer signposting with the offer code, really making that stand out to get the, uh, get the, the sign ups on there as well. And using some crowd psychology and direct gaze and the rule of three there to just make this work a little bit harder. That's great, uh, Julian. Uh, so one of the things that stands out uh, to me about this is, uh, you know, the use of that uh, really centrally located um, call out with 20% off with a promo code uh, on both the front and the back. And, um, you know, we, we process a lot of postcards and, and one of the things that, that we like to really uh, advise folks to do is to really think about the location of that call to action and and use both sides of the postcard to do that and and really kind of you can center a lot of your design around the call to action like you've done here yeah and I think you know one of the things that we're looking at here as well is the irregular shape of that box as well there's no other shape similar to that on that actual page, the use of the orange there as well. You know, it's, it's picked out with the Board Vitals logo. So it really kind of feels on brand, but very kind of, you know, it, it pushes, it gives people a good offer without feeling too salesy, keeps it on brand, but really kind of achieves that standout without damaging the actual Board Vitals brand reputation. Great, great. So, Uh, Lars, do you want to take it from here? Sure. Um, so obviously this, this presentation has filled, been filled with a lot of really good information. Um, and it, a lot of it tracks from print, as you mentioned before, Dennis, you were talking about, um, how some of the same principles apply on whether you're doing digital or print or physical print, uh, media. But the idea still remains the same and the psychology can still remain the same. And so what I want to talk about is, is some of the context around the different ways that these principles can be applied to your full campaign. As you know, with Green Rope, you have the ability to set up a lot of different aspects of your lead nurturing strategy. Actually, they all really should be in there. Um, and through Postalytics, we can execute some, a, a little bit on both the execution, the sending side, as well as the listening side for how to understand what your leads are doing and, and get them towards the bottom of your funnel. So visually here, you can see that the landing pages are often, um, you know, sort of the, the digital version of some of these, um, of these print pieces where we want to put, uh, apply these same principles to those landing pages. 
And with that, of course, we want to make sure we have tracking, um, the campaign tracking set up. So with the campaign IDs that you can get from people who will be clicking um, both to your landing page and from your landing page once they're going to another page. Um, looking at the sign up forms that you build and making sure that you use our personalization tools so that people see the ability to, uh, they, they really see the, the personalized content for them. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, and of course, we want to use the marketing automation tools to our advantage. So we have the, the ways that we can listen for people doing things so we can see when people hit certain minimum lead scores. We can see when people are opening emails, they're landing on particular pages. There are a lot of things that can trigger our workflows and those workflows then can in, in turn do something. So we want to look at this strategically from the perspective of what do we want someone to do as they go down our customer journey and ultimately go to the point of becoming a conversion. So um, let's see if we can move here. There we go. So one of the things that we really recommend doing is taking some time to get to journeyflow.com. Uh, journeyflow.com is a free tool that we have offered for people to use to help them do exactly what you see here. Um, and what this is, is a visual tool to understand how you want people to go through their customer journey. And so through this, we can strategically look at the various different action points and decision points where people are going to be interacting with your brand. Some of these will be sending a print piece. Some of them will be sending an email and you can look to see if someone is opening or clicking on certain links on the email and then figure out what you want to do as a result. And through this contingency planning, you can automate this entire process. So what we want to do is look at it strategically with journeyflow.com, which is easy. Of course, you'll log in and with your LinkedIn, it's, and then you can save these, you can share them. But the idea is to take this visual representation of what the customer journey looks like, and then translate that into a strategy that implements all of the tools that you saw earlier in this webinar. So that's really cool, well, Lars. I, I haven't seen any, anything like that where you, you, you've got it up on the public web when, and anybody can use it. Yep, yep. It's a, it's a tool we offer to our users, but, but really anybody can use it. Um, you can go in and because every, every business has a customer journey. You're, you have to model the way all of your customers are going to be interacting with your brand and how they're going to move from one stage to the next. And at some point, you may just want to say, you know, we'll call it quits. Um, you know, we're not going to follow up with them anymore. And that's what, where the little stop is. Um, but until you reach that point, you want to continue to put as many different contingencies in place as possible. Um, and a lot of those, like, you know, you mentioned earlier about how um, traditionally print has been used for lead acquisition for the first, the first time someone sees something. But when you put it in the middle of the funnel, it has a very, um, a very powerful effect. And, and, you know, like you were talking before about trust and about um, the tactile response that you get from print. The fact that it's a different medium that stands out because people are sending less print means that it's a perfect thing to include at any stage of your funnel. Um, whether you're doing awareness, whether you're trying to get people to move down the funnel or to thank them for becoming a customer and then sending that, that print message to them. So we actually, we use it when we're able to get a customer's um, address as part of the signup process when they sign up for a trial, we send them a postcard with useful, helpful information for them. Um, and that has, and, and we measure how many of those that we get sent out and how many of those actually call to action. Oh, that's great. And, and you know, trust is, is becomes even more important as you move down through the funnel and you, you want to, you want to build on that trust and, and accentuate the value that you, the, you're placing on the relationship that you're developing. So uh, this makes all the sense in the world. And, and then with our postalytics screen rope integration, we can drop uh, postcards and letters right into these workflows. Absolutely. And, and especially true, I mean, in our particular case, where we're talking about selling a CRM and a marketing automation platform, trust is very important because there's so much 
energy that goes into making this work. I mean, businesses have to have to know that they can rely on it. They have to know that it has all the features that they need, that they got all the support that they need. And the only way to really communicate that is through education. And sometimes people are better at reading emails. Sometimes people are better at reading things on social. Sometimes people are better at reading video. And sometimes people are better at actually looking at something in their hands. And so I think the more bases that you cover, the more likely you are to interact with someone psychologically in a way that, that is, is more meaningful to them. So if we can advance the slide one here. So um, this is just showing our, our um, sort of the connection between us and Postalytics. So on the left side here, so we're using Zapier um, for this. So then the beauty of Zapier is it's, it's super inexpensive. It's very effective, super reliable, and it's also really easy to set up. So all you do is you set up, so in this case is a trigger, um, and so what that does is that trigger just looks for, and there are certain things that you can do with green rope that can cause a trigger, um, so or that can trigger an action. And so what the trigger in this case, in this example on the left side is, is adding a new contact. And then the action is sending the postcard. And so sending and tracking the postcard. And so what you can see there is the action on the right is actually activated through this workflow that has a postcard, a send postcard activity on it. So um, it's very effective, very easy to do. So you can either use a workflow to activate it or you can use the Zapier integration. Both, both work very effectively and very easy to do. So next. I don't, I don't have control to be able to move the screen forward. There we go. So um, the other part about this, and the nice thing about uh, Postalytics is they support the same kind of um, personalization that we do. So in our case, you're probably familiar with the placeholders. And so we have the placeholders where you can see um, the first name placeholder, but we also have, and those are activated. If you look on the screen here, the, the merge button right there. Um, so the, the, the merge for the personalization can be a static field where it can be their name, it can be their company name, anything that's static, or a custom user-defined field, or it can also be a dynamic placeholder, a rules-based placeholder. So we call those dynamic placeholders, and what you can do with those is say, if a certain condition is met, then do this. So one example of that might be a different color scheme for, say, a male um, prospect, customer, or lead, or a female um, who might have a different color scheme or if someone is geographically based, maybe if you know that someone is in the United States as opposed to being in Canada, the messaging and the content um, will be different um, or the colors might be different. So you can really personalize that based on anything that you want. Um, as, as much data as you have in your CRM, you can use for either a static merge like you see here or with a dynamic merge with the rules. So that's why when we talk to people about setting up their CRM, we talk to them about making sure that they have all the data that they need. So that when you're doing your planning phase, you're looking at the actual data that you're gonna store first. You model what you're gonna store, what you're gonna need, because that's gonna play into how you do your personalization down the road. So let's move forward one more. All right. and. Thank you very much. I, I'm sure we have some good questions out there. Um, I, I am so happy that you guys got on this, this presentation. Julian, you shared a lot of information that was super relevant. And, and like you said, is, is really it's psychology. And it's not necessarily something just for print. It's something that we can carry with us in all of the things we do, whether we're designing uh, online ads versus print ads versus you know, anything. I mean, the, the psychology remains the same through all of these different techniques that you have. And, and I think that it was very eye-opening. It, it, it was for me, and I'm sure it was for our audience. Absolutely, Lars. And I think certainly, you, you know, when you have a look at these rules and you start applying them specifically to ECRM and email campaigns and any kind of other forms of social media campaigns, the effect of them is really powerful and people will see a, a, a huge increase in their uh, response rates. Uh, thank you so much, um, Dennis, Julian, and Lars. Uh, that was an incredible presentation. Um, we do have a couple of questions. 
Um, and so I'm going to get started, um, just kind of calling those out and you guys can answer. Um, the first one is from uh, Rich. Um, he asks, um, well, he says, the creative looks generational. The newer direct marketing looks like social media, lots of white space, and the rework looks like older traditional direct marketing. Any way to blend them? Um, and then he kind of expands on that question, is creative tested against generations? I would like to view and respond differently to creative um, than my 20 something year old kids would. Um, it's what we're used to seeing or prefer. Any details or any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, well, that recently I've, do, I've been conducting a number of um, campaigns based on those actual kind of questions because I think, you know, the, the question there is about generations and, and, you know, does the actual kind of work that, that we've kind of redone, does it look older? Um, not to younger eyes, I would say, because ultimately a lot of people haven't been exposed to um, some of the direct marketing, traditional direct marketing techniques. So they're actually seeing them for the first time. Now I get what you mean about do the designs look a little bit kind of dated and is there a hybrid between the two? And the answer again is yes. I mean, what we usually do is we usually create little toolkits so that we essentially we start with what well, let's say for example on the mynd we would start with uh, a kind of the original on the left and the full redesign on the right and then what you would do is essentially rain back so you've probably got two or three nuances of design and writing in between those those points what i've done there is just showing you a real kind of um you know kind of um diverse kind of designs of you know real kind of pushing it um, so there are nuances that you can that you can do. Yes, um, is will it be affected by younger attitudes or anything like that? Not from what we've seen so far, and we've we've running some tests with, for clients in both the US and across Europe as well. That actually, just the the good strong psychological techniques they just work, and um, you, you know, and and essentially you can you can use as many or as little as you like, but the, you know, essentially, I would always say to anybody, test and learn, test and learn, test and learn, you know, add a few in at a time, see if they work, you know, and find out what works for you and your brand. Thank yeah. you. Um, and Rich, let us know if that answer is uh, your questions. That's very interesting. Um, our next was, question. I uh, think that was a really good question. Um, and I think a lot of the same principles apply online or offline. You know, I mean, the, um, I think that people are going to consume, and Alessandra, you may, you may talk about this because you've been working on some of it, but you know, there's, there's sort of the, the pendulum swing of whether people want more or less short versus long term, long form content. You know, do you, do you write really long landing pages and long ads and long blog articles and eBooks, or do you have really short snippets, um, Twitter ish that, uh, that people respond to and, and does the generation really make a difference in what people are willing to consume? Um, yeah. And, and I, I definitely, um, agree with that. I think it comes down um, to really understanding your audience and what you're selling. Um, because it, and, and I mean, like, you, you know, you've got all that data stored within, you know, your CRM and marketing automation platform and by using um, tools like Postalytics, I mean, you can really gauge, um, you know, and test out what works better than the other. And I mean, you know, with Greener, we test out our landing pages all the time and we can see, you know, what, what performs better than the next. But I think it really comes down to just really understanding your audience and what you're selling and being able to give the content in, in a way that's going to be easily digestible, uh, but also by giving more information, you know, for example, you know, we're, you know, learning, you know, with CRM that, you know, people want more information kind of, uh, you know, before they give their information, you know, from us, um, just because, you know, they're, they're doing research and there's a lot of, you know, factors that play into a software choice, like, you know, like Green Rope or another CRM marketing automation company, whereas like, you know, with a tennis shoe or something like that, that's going to be a very different sell. Um, so I think it, it, it very much depends. And I think at the end of the day, you just got to test it. 
Um, our next question is, do you recommend getting cheeky with hard financial information for existing accounts other than bold highlighting to important information? <laughs> can you define <laughs> cheeky? Can you, <laughs> can you expand on cheeky? Because <laughs> uh, I mean, cheeky is one of those words, isn't it? It's open to personal interpretation. Is there any way you can expand it? And Sean, if you want to go ahead and expand on that, uh, we'll be happy to. Um, uh, Sean says, Dennis, fill in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing uh, that uh, where, where Sean is, is going is, you know, how um, how far out on the edge can you go uh, when you're when you're talking about personal financial information, uh, right? right. And, okay. and yeah. In terms of like you know, a balance between you know getting attention uh, as opposed to you know the sort of trust and and gravitas of the of the matter that you're dealing with. Yeah, and I think Alessandra. Um, hit the nail on the head. First of all, obviously, we've got to understand the audience and it's got to be right for the audience. But equally as well, it's got to be right for the brand. Uh, you, you know, a very kind of conservative, uh, you know, dry brand suddenly going out there with strange kind of um, jokey kind of crazy marketing messages just won't fit. And I think so certainly understanding the, the, the brand and understanding the audience is the first thing. And I think then what you want to do is, is actually kind of just look at um, nuances of messaging that might be right for those audience because what one person finds crazy or funny or humorous or sad or, you know, isn't what somebody else will do. But equally, I mean, we, we run quite a lot of tests, especially across financial services as well, because it's a very highly competitive market. And sometimes all you're doing is looking for that little bit of standout. So actually sometimes, you know, the message might just be a little bit of a play on words, something a little bit clever, something a little bit insightful, something that just poses a question. And I think it's, you know, it's got, just got to be right for the audience. And sometimes it's just a change in stock. You might just change the stock and suddenly you add a fifth color or, uh, you know, a glittery stock and you just want to make it stand out and just make people reappraise it on, on you know, in the mailbox as well. So certainly, you know, I would always kind of <clears throat> say, yes, test and learn things again, but always make sure that you really understand your audience before you start doing that. And we've got one last question here. We've got her about 10 minutes over. So um, can I have my mail outs looked at occasionally for comments, suggestions? Do I have to join Green Rope? Um, and Michael, the answer to that is if you don't already have a Green Rope account or if you're not currently using CRM and marketing automation um, company, we highly encourage you to uh, give Green Rope um, a try, get a demo with one of our, our experts and see what the platform can do for you and how it can help you with your business. Um, and then, of course, um, if Dennis, you want to, um, and now that I think that would be a great time for everyone to just um, to talk briefly, kind of give some last um, last thoughts, and then maybe um, give um, just a um, you know a, a sentence or two about how uh, people can connect with your companies um, as well. And then, um, and just so all of our panelists know, uh, we've got, had some really great. Um, everyone is uh, is coming in with some great compliments, um, awesome content, very informative, um, and just a really great show. So um, thank you, um, all of you, for your incredible insights here. Um, so now, uh, before we close out, I just want to pass it back to uh, you guys just to kind of give your final thoughts and um, any ways that our user, uh, our attendees today um, can get in touch with you if they've got questions or would like to learn more about of your, each of your respective companies. Yeah, Dennis, do you want to go first? That sounds great. Well, first, uh, uh, thanks to Alessandra, uh, Lars, and Julian for uh, uh, helping to, to put this thing together and, and organize it. Uh, Alessandra, great job, as always. Uh, and, um, you know, it's really been a, a lot of fun uh, working with Julian and Lars on this. Uh, we're super passionate about making direct mail a relevant, vibrant uh, channel. Uh, that is 
performing really well in the digital marketing world. And, you know, by uh, uh, bringing together the best thought processes around the technology and the creative, uh, we're hoping to uh, really help our clients be super successful. Um, and so uh, you can learn more about Postalytics at our website, postalytics.com. We're all over social media as well. Uh, we'd love to hear from anybody. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a great partnership with Green Rope, uh, and, and we've had a, a tremendous amount of success working with Green Rope clients and with Green Rope directly. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's really a pleasure to be working with everybody here. Thanks. And I'd just like to thank everybody for, for listening to uh, uh, my presentation. I'd like to thank Lars, Dennis, and Alessandra for uh, inviting me along. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with these guys. And, you know, we're going to be working closer together in the future. Um, if anybody wants to ask me any questions after this, feel free to connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, you, I'm easily found. And um, Lars, over to you. Yeah, and of course, the, you know, without being too repetitive, echoing what you guys said, I was, it's, uh, it's been really an honor and a privilege to work with both of you and uh, really insightful. And we enjoy working with Postalytics and having you as our, as our technology partner for print. And then also, Julian, um, you know, I, I know I've, we've only connected with you here in the last few weeks, but uh, everything I've seen that you create is really, really thoughtful and insightful. And, uh, and today, of course, was just par for the course. So, I mean, it's, it's just great to have that kind of content available. Um, and I think everyone is going to download this and, and go through the slides and, and watch it again for all of the great uh, nuggets of wisdom that you shared. So, so thank you both very much for being a part of the team. And uh, we're, we're glad that we're all in this together. Fabulous. Thanks guys. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You and again, um, thank you all for attending. Um, again, my name is Alessandra Guyvin. I am the marketing manager here at GreenRope. Um, if you're not a GreenRope user and would like to uh, give GreenRope a try, uh, we'd love for you to set up a demo uh, with one of our uh, GreenRope experts. They can happily show you the platform and get you set up with a trial. Um, and if you are a GreenRope user, uh, we really hope that you take advantage of our integration with Postalytics. Um, it's a really awesome, um, really awesome awesome tool, really great way to stand out. And um, again, uh, it's really easy to set up um, within your Green Earth account as well, um, you know, through workflows and all that good stuff. And of course, if you have any questions with that, you can also always contact our support team. Uh, we've got tons of resources to help you um, get that set up. Uh, again, I will be sending out a recording uh, of this webinar along with the slides. Uh, I thank you again uh, for attending. And of course, I really am very thankful uh, to all of our panelists. I really appreciate all of your amazing insight and um, I hope that we can do this again soon. Look forward to it. Thank you very much guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful afternoon everyone. Bye-bye.